I'm giving away a brand new iPhone 7 special edition. All you have to do to win is turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon and you have to be subscribed or else I cannot enter you into this giveaway. Meanwhile, Radiance offline general. I am assuming just freshly used his shrine, yep. And now he's proceeding to stay in the lane, but nighttime is coming in one more minute. And General's doing pretty good. Like he's he's getting a lot of experience. Definitely far more experience than this Nyx Assassin and this Keeper of the Light are getting. Pikachu's doing, doing such a good job at not getting baited by Dendi's Shrapnels. This time he has no choice. But he gets the bottle. Ah, oh, the DOT from the Shrapnel just barely gets the kill. And right now they used a Maledict on Dadshack. I mean, on General. But Dadshack's in deep. There's no TP rotations available. Because Navi Biver does not have one. And Navi RMN has no items whatsoever. <laughs> Well played by Sniper. Here I was saying that Pikachu did not have much to be afraid of against the Sniper, but even though he has two points in Dragon's Blood, his chip damage is still super irritating on top of the three points in Shrapnel. Shrapnel's all magic damage. So that means that it doesn't matter how much armor you have. Biver steals the bounty rune. Fervian goes looking for it, but he sees Biver. Yet, even after seeing Biver, Dachek still hung around for a little bit, boosts the damage of Void because he was in Ghost Shroud. I don't know why Dachek was sitting around. He may have already, he may have been like down here whenever Fervian saw Slardar, but then at that point, Fervian can't keep going for the bounty rune. You need to turn around and be like, I need to protect my Necrophos. So, already, one kill for General with that first knight. Phase boots completed. General is doing so well right now. Bot lane. We got an impale. It's gonna miss. They get the kill on the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, the off lane for Hive is doing much more poorly. As now Biver has taken over the bot lane, which opens up room for General. He's gonna regen in the fountain, buy parts of his urn, and then probably go back to the top lane. Because, well, actually, no, he may go mid. Yeah, he's gonna go mid. And he's just going straight in. Shrapnel is used, number one. Assassinate, yeah, Pikachu is dead for sure. Such a good timing for that rotation. Dendi is sitting on these Shrapnel charges only whenever a kill attempt presents itself. And the fact that he hits six for Assassinate just makes that all the better. He's been getting a ton of denies. He has 10 denies, and on top of Pikachu dying and missing some creeps after that, this Dragonite is only level five and a half while Dendi is almost about to hit level 7. And nighttime continues. This ward, gonna spot out... Oh, no, it's a Radiant ward. So, General... and Biver. Looking for an opportunity. Fervian, he's dead. Void, crush, right-clicked. Now Dachak needs to be careful, he's still hanging around here, has his Ghost Shroud, but that just means he's gonna be more damage from the Void! He's waiting for the Crush until the Ghost Shroud times out, very well played by Biver. RMN comes in with the Lightning and they get the kill secured. Now this, this is what I like to see. This is Night Stalker being used to maximum effectiveness, Navi is coordinating everything perfectly. Assassinate is up, and Sniper has the mana for Assassinate and all three Shrapnels, but now he has two Shrapnel charges. Although now Fervian comes in, and looks like they gave up, and now Biver going back up here. There's still one more minute of nighttime, and General has hit six, so they could, could go for Darkness if they want. Sp sprint in, well coordinated yet again, but this time Gross Shroud. This time, Dachak was able to time it well enough that it doesn't boost any void damage, and Slytherin Crush does no damage either. Pikachu actually activated Dragon for him. But he has no points in Dragon's Tail, so I don't know why. Meanwhile, bot lane, they're going in onto PA. 
Illuminate, two points, does quite a bit of damage, but Pycat jumps onto a siege creep and gets out. And he's actually going to go all the way back to base. Four heroes closing in on Pikachu, and Pikachu's dragon form is about to time out. Dendi has two shrapnels. General's coming in. But he's spotted out by this Dire Ward. They're all spotted out by this Dire Ward, so Pikachu immediately heads onto the bot lane. Or, well, actually, he may, yeah, he may go for the bot lane. But actually, Dragon's form is... Well, I, I don't know. Could have maybe gone for a push on bot. But instead, just gonna continue farming up mid. I guess Orbit and Smiley are enough to push out bot. Unless they go for the defense, but they're sprinting in. And... Pycat's on the top side. What a crit! Immediately takes out half of Smiley's HP. Biver doesn't even bother with the crush. And now Darkness is activated by General. They're going in. This ward barely catches a glimpse of him, but it's too little too late. It's now Pikachu taking a lot ton of damage. And Assassinate, not even necessary. Dragon's Tail is skilled. Maledict doing a fair amount of damage onto General, but he's diving the tower anyway. General. Crush is used onto the Nyx Assassin, but it's carapaced, and wow, General does so much work in the span of one darkness. Three heroes killed. 12 to 0 right now in Navi's favor. Again, like I said, if there was ever a team for Navi to beat in these qualifiers, it was either this team or Double Dimension, and so. It's not anything to write home about, but it's important that Na'Vi are still doing as well as they are. Because if they had a tough time against Hive also, then that really discourages you. Assassinate, not gonna do any damage, but it'll get the mini stun onto Dachak, and that's all they need to cancel his TP. Well played yet again. What's our man up to? Working on treads. Bot tower's getting pushed again by Smiley and the crew. And second tower of the game as mid did go down. Biver is getting very close to that blink dagger. And the next night is in a minute and a half. General working on. Oh, he's going for a helm. Hmm. Okay. I like it. We've been seeing. So, this is the third Night Stalker game that I've seen this qualifier. Um, one game he went for a Midas into Ag. Hold that thought. Mid lane. We got a Vendetta, but Pycat, he's playing it real safe. Doesn't see Nick's Assassin on the map. And he's going to be chilling in Tower Range. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, the three builds that I saw, first game was. Midas into Aghanim Scepter, I'm pretty sure. Uh, second game was Urn into Armlet into BKB. And now Biver gets that Blink Dagger reveal. Gonna put it onto Dachak, but Dachak holds onto Ghost's form. Darkness is activated. I'm surprised that General didn't go for the Void. They may have been enough to... Like, if he just stood around waiting for Dachak to use Ghost Trout so that he could boost his heal, may have been enough. They see a heal traveling to nothing, and General... Well played goes north to dodge that impale. He's still very tanky. You can't you can't imagine uh, there's no animation. Biver holds on to the crush before Carapace and they get a crit dagger to finish off. Assassinate onto Dachag, not even needed. They might get it on Fervian now. Cancels out the Death Ward, gets the kill afterwards. Hive still have not gotten a single kill yet. 16 to 0 right now. Navi large and in charge, Biver with that 11 minute blink dagger, and right as darkness times out, it becomes natural night. And so, General still has plenty of time to party. His Armin is gonna be placing some super aggressive wards, but he doesn't place it on the cliff? Who was pinging him? Necro was pinging him, but how could Necro know? They're gonna probably put a sentry ward up on this cliff. How, how could they know that? How are they pinging that out like so accurately? I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. 
Long range dagger. Armin actually turns a warding mission into a flank. They get the kill. Illuminate gonna actually only clip onto the Leshrek. And they get another kill on the Witch Doctor, General. The God. Burn onto orbit. Don't dive. You die. Okay. Well, he baits out Carapace. They don't have any. Oh my god, they're going for it. Oh my god, they're going to get it! They're diving a tier 3! <laughs> this is how brutal these lanes just get. When you run a 5 range lineup, and Jalopy's the same kind of thing, like Iceberg's doing over 100 damage a hit. In fact, actually, more than that. In moments like this, like, you can cold embrace and maybe save yourself from the physical, which doesn't actually work because he's blocked in by the creep wave. Iceberg just has to wait till he comes out of the cold embrace. Baby Knight will appear. And he's probably just going to orb himself up and then rift to kill off Solon as he sees Viva. So, oh, there's your black hole. Going to be committed by Viva. Iceberg, he doesn't have phase shift and he will be punished for this one. Phase shift now with the silence. Yeah, you're not escaping from that. He'll die from the imprisonment damage as he, as he emerges. And there it is. And what was purchased, it will in fact be, for now, Knight. Uh, he's actually building up his Ring of Aquila first. Cantrus? Okay. Too busy just staring at Dry Ranger, but they're gonna lose two heroes here, Team Spirit. And this is the overcommittal. Sonic, no way to save yourself from that one. That was a sad day when you gotta buy Tangos. He's still got a Quelling Blade, so it's not because he's worried about Sprout. Arrived in middle lane, didn't throw out the dagger, and now Iceberg with the help of always when to fly. If he can get the telekin to scrap, was well, he still? He stole Spectral Dagger, but the puck already found the kill because Spectre actually broke. He broke the Dream Coil. Baby Knight being picked up, throwing down. There's no black hole, just a Midnight Pulse. Mech Charge giving a little bit more life back, but the damage is going to be pumping out right now. Onyx doing a lot of the work, but you saw the damage from Gold Black. He took half the life off the Darkseer. It really is mad for Akbar moment. You just cannot repel firepower of this magnitude of Team Spirit. They are going to walk all over London Conspiracy. It's not even a, like a level a level 11 Dro Ranger. Like we're 10 minutes in and you're being that heavily DPS'd. Team that won't really care about this. They understand the wind condition. And the wind condition is pushing in through bottom. They push all five together. You got Nagus the Immortal. You got Illidan's already triggered his aura. They won't have that. You got a purge creep as well. Oh my lord. Nice curse. Illidan, if he goes down here, oh, he stays alive. He's still at the Aegis Immortal anyway. So curse is down. You've lost that control factor. And Baby Knight just keeps getting purged, allowing Goldbot to come in closer. They'll have to defensively imprison. And then Iceberg jumps for the silence. With the Fable Fog from Always on a Fly, they find the kill. And then you actually steal Splinter Blast. It's the most powerful ability that Solon is able to give to his team right now. And this bottom tower, Elder just killing from range. Which, wondering if he wants to build into a Dragonlance now if it's worthwhile going a BKB. Because you've already got the mech up from Funnick. He'll TP back in a moment. So you got like a high level of regeneration, which is just going to arrive for Team Spirit. Uh, they will take the Drax. There's nothing that can stop them. And you trigger a drum charge. Their fortification slows them down, but it won't stop them. Iceberg just goes for a double silence. There's no dream call, but impetus damage. The, the, I, I don't want to be an ace here, but uh, you cannot fight this. Kepka runs himself in. You go for your spectral horn. He's gone back and wall available, but the gas is perfectly timed there from Illidan. Silencing up the darks here. Now he buys back for Team Spirit. They've basically made a perfect arc around London Conspiracy to go for the black hole, but now he's down as well. This game is over. Team Spirit, they are wiping all over LC, and it's a 13 13 minute GG call. That was a quick game to say the least, but you can see five man lineup with Rogue Aura, how much it just slaughters a lineup which goes for any level of read and there wasn't enough lane presence. There was no way to contest the draw ranger on the safe lane. You're running a dark seer, so you're already accepting the fact that your lane is very, very passive, bounty hunter. And he's not farming, so Biver and Goldblack are gonna stay on the same levels. Oh like also pinged out saying like he knows exactly where he is. They start the tornado, just force in the lane. And yeah, it's a three on three, but then Fortune's end and the one second stun! Okay, that that just looked a little too easy. Vivid will cut to the tree line. A strike into the mid, iceberg. 
Ah, oh, that Forge Spirit. Trying to remove more armor. Iceberg may have to salve up for a moment. Yeah, he will as he goes up the hill. These ganks need to work, but the Sentry's Wards is down. So Funnick is well aware of Viva's presence here. And now we'll allow top lane to then engage. Yep, they take out the Ember Spirit. And Crystal Maiden can just be do like dove right now. But the Chen is finding levels. Funnick is still having the time of his life. The Sentry Wards is now going to reveal the fact that Viva's here. Triggers the phase boost, gets back up to the tower. And Viva, man, you're too close here. You're way too close here. And with no Ghost Walk, Funnick's going to get himself a kill. But Team Spirit aren't, aren't going to just like hold on their laurels now. They want to attack even further. Goblin attaching for Baby Knight. It's a double controller, but Baby Knight will still go down. Iceberg going to shift the, the uh, aggro off him. Really good movement from Goblin, and they get to go now from the top lane as well. Fortunes end over on top of Jalopy. Elden with a two second stun. That heal is now starting to kick in, but always want to fly. Obviously just throws another nuke on top of him. And that heal which always on a flash he provided towards the Ember Spirit won't do anything. The Crystal Bank will also pop 6-0 with 5 minutes in. Team Spirit, they've got this game by the throat and they are throttling. But you can try for a solo kill, but then you're going to burn a huge AoE ulti controller. That Jalopi, he can't even cut himself through. 3 seconds on the stun and Illidan blocks his path with a great reality rift. A little lucky on the distance part of it. And looks like Kefka as well. This Prophet, he's gonna create a whole bunch of trees. Oh wow, if he doesn't get this kill, the Sun Strike's on the way in, but Kefka's dying in a moment, because it's gonna be two attacks from Funnick. He blew Ravage and doesn't even find a kill on Funnick. That is the ultimate disaster right now for Lund Conspiracy. Teen Spirit are all over him like a hot rash. Nolan's gonna chase after Solon as well. Untrolled comes down, the Courier actually helps give vision over on Solon. Just sitting on top of him as well, and Sol knows he can't do anything about it. Wrath of Nature was also on cooldown. Hello, bottom lane. Sophonic dropping low. Kafka. Can he even? No, he can't. Always want to fly. The Sun Strike. Funnick! He walked back into it! LC will finally get themselves one kill on the board. Chump also needs levels. Now, the Ember Spirit is never going to get anything at this rate. Like, he just picked up a bottle, but it's leaning wise, it seemed better. See, now you trigger the Ravage. There's no Hand of God. They don't have that extra life back, but now Illidan, oh, he wants, he really wants Baby Knight. And he's got the damage as well. And with a three second stun over on Viva, Fortune's ever more in a flight. They're giving as much life back to Illidan as possible. He may still pot trick here. Nope, the armor toggles himself back up again. Three heroes lost for LC. Always on a fly and makes a break for the tree line. But with Funny behind him, he can potentially sprout and buy some more space here for the Oracle. Even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. A four second stun. The TP's down from the Titan, so they realized that was happening. But a 17 2. You got one kill. This is not a heavy nuking combo, even though Oracle has that himself. There's the fact that Illidan can just sustain for so damn long. Like, he's probably getting himself ready to fight this. He was waiting for the Anchor Smash. Now your reality ripped it back in again. You can turn that armor on in just a moment. The Sun Strike's gonna come in. Illidan not even getting caught in between toggles. They're trying to do it, but the tie is down for the count. Always wanna fly runs away. He's actually got his false promise up again at the moment, but it's Gold Black rotating him from behind. This game, like, we haven't even seen a tier two tower go down, but it's already over. GG is the call. The players will agree. We actually get through this entire series without clocking 25 minutes worth of game time on the board. Love the conspiracy have just had the boot firmly shoved up the rectum. Team Spirit looking solid, laning good, but it felt like London Conspiracy gave them the space to do whatever the hell they wanted again. London Conspiracy, this is, isn't what I expect from them. Like, Let me get, uh, prepare for like battle. Was, I like Naga because I can help with something. Damn, I can't forget that. Who is me? Oh, are they? They are! Oh, shit, boys! And Merlini calls it! Merlini just fucking called it! Ah, he knew! They'll know! They will know! And there she is! There it is! He fucking calls it! Oh, how do you play this? How do you play this? Perch holding the cast. Now she's gonna start bouncing. Throws it out, the loot is almost out. Shadow Wave feels good, but it's not good enough. Melini's so low. He's gonna escape. No, the mid's uphill. Ah, stop there. Need more damage. Let Ninja to go down. Blitz, Max Dolls, but he's down too. The Banner gonna fucking double kill. Cap, Shad, something, block him. 
It's a three for two. Purge is still alive out of all this fucking shit. And now a banner. He went curse for banners for us. There was no shield. There was nothing else. What the fuck is this game right now? Purge just had to take the rune. Fucked. Duke it. Duke it. To the trees. Get out of there, fucked. Oh, all five are chasing him. All five are chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are they actually gonna wait? Wait, 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 wait. They're, they're going back in. They're going back in. It's like, I gotta fucking stop this shit. I gotta stop this shit. You can't see in. You can't do anything else. Roshan belongs to him. They get a second life and a baton. <laughs> so e everything they gain, they wait. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Is this game? Is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is kind of low because of my pace. Perch moves over. Wow. What the fuck game is this? If they actually lose this way, I'm gonna laugh my ass off. This this will be the ultimate way a Veggie's team would be eliminated from a fucking major qualifier. <laughs> oh, here they go. Dyer's top tower is under attack. They at least trigger the Aegis. Alright, that's a bit smoke. Why the fuck do they just smoke? Dyer's top tower. The Beaver Lady's also yeah, needs to take a tower. Fox it with the same. Looks like his creeps can be smoked. This is just so fucking weird. What is this? <laughs> this is this is a clowny, clowny fucking way to approach the game. So Fox is the tier one tower. He dash okay, Fox is doing so well on this top because obviously doing I think like he's pulling is just like you're actually looking at tower trade off. Dyer's top tower is falling. They just wait. Why? What? We just need bad rider. Thanks, Major. I think we need bad here. No. I feel like I should have been the one. You probably should have been. I'm gonna back up now. You have ruined my facts. facts. Too deep, bro. <laughs> this could have been so much, so much more effective um, if they did kill Rocha at the right time. Like if Melini didn't think about it. Like if Melini didn't look at this lineup and go, "Oh shit, this is a Rocha lineup." This would be such a different game right now. Shit! Man, I, I wouldn't be surprised if WD even just like call GG at this point. Like their their push has failed so hard. This this game is this game is practically over. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Again, <laughs> look at this. Like, I, when you're grouping up like this, like, even having the glaives doesn't help you. Having like the second point of a Luna Blessing will probably help this push more than anything else. But you're like two points away from Terra, no points up with the Vengeance Aura. Oh, that Firefly Blood Ninja's gonna burn so hard. Uh, Shallow Graves only could delay it. Fuck, look at that Luna! Look at it burn! Holy shit! The cinders of the Dire team! An ultra kill for Fox! Max, it's sticky, man. Alright, walk around him in a circle. Walk around, guys. Walk around him in a circle. This guy needs to learn. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Oh. GG! Six and a half minutes! Six and a half minutes! Well, we'll see you back for day number two! Radiant victory! He had to go. He has to go for a final exam. Six minutes and 41 seconds. Can you believe it? Uh, Alright, I guess that's it.